So this is the workshop and it's a bit more packed out than it was in the photo I put up the other day. Um, anyone that's been here knows it's, it's quite a difficult tiny space uh, to be in, let alone working with a few people. Uh, so first things first, uh, just got a gas hob. I use that for melting the pitch. Got a load of pitch, which I use mostly for bells. Depends, it's a bit more forgiving than Cerebend a lot of the time. Um, Cerebend, the pot that that goes in, you boil it in water, but the pot has rusted through, so I need to get another one. Um, that's all the dregs, so I need to s scoop all that out when it's uh, when it's melted down. Um, so that's sort of the melting down station, filling stuff. Uh, this bin is a water tank, which is full of poly chips to keep the heat in. Uh, there's a fish tank heater uh, for like tropical fish that you can set uh, like the temperature to. So it's set to about 21 degrees at the moment which seems to work for pitch and cerebend. Um, and there's a tube there for sort of not losing short, shorter lengths. Um, so that just lives there. It's kind of permanently switched on. This bench is kind of the heating area. We've got um, fire bricks um, and different sort of levels of bricks so you can sort of build up something to sort of rest your bell in uh, or tubes um, I've got sort of various mandrels for planishing and, and whatnot sort of various tapers all sorts of stuff um, this is where I keep most of the, the tools for bell making that I use most of the time uh, the tooth cutting pliers I use uh, my silver solders under here um, Braddle, so of all the all these sort of little bits that I use for bell making, like binding wire, everything's just under there, so it's all in the same place. Uh, that's the flux I use. There's an old vice that I use occasionally, and sort of clamp it to the bending, <laughs> bending jig, um, to just have an extra vice. I've got some lead. Uh, in a crucible, so I pour that into various moulds, uh, an old bike headset to sort of get the, I don't think I've got any, they're the bigger kind. Uh, I sort of draw lead pipes and the pommel ferrules, I sort of draw through that. We've got an acid tank, which is mostly water, and then there's some nitric and some sulfuric acid. And then there's a water tank at the back which has bicarbonate of soda in it, so it sort of, see if it fizzes. Yeah. So that, in theory, neutralizes the acid. Uh, that's the water in the acid tank. Blowtorch, nothing special, does the job. That's uh, just straight into a gas canister um, and that that works quite well there's a heating area we've got a little bandsaw that I've had for ages love it don't use it so much now I've got the chop saw around the other side uh, but it's good for for like bending jigs that I have to make by hand or sort of just chopping something um, got a disc sander which is pretty useful as well. I'd quite like a bigger one, but I don't know where I'd put it. So I'm sort of stuck with this for now, but it does the job. And this bench was made out of pallets. Uh, the first bench I had, um, it's just made out of all scrap wood, just bolted together. And then um, sort of old toolboxes, um, kind of scraps of emery, it just all sorts gets dumped on here and sort of the back all the tools were sort of built up to here and then I built this top part to give you some tube storage 
Um, so they're like the regular sort of everything tubes. It's mostly this lot. And then this is all outer that fits it. Brass or nickel. Uh, the silver lives somewhere else. But that's sort of most of the tube is in those two. And then I need to sort out these above it because they could be more useful, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I built sort of that up to there and it's bolted to the rafters and then it sort of comes down and then there's this bench, uh, which is an old desk. Um, I take a tube out, put it up against here and you can measure across, put it in this chop saw with the vise. Um, and that's a uh, specific like non-ferrous cutting blade. It's quite thick, but it cuts straight and does a really good job. So I use that probably more than the bandsaw now. Um, this is a bit of a mess up there. Haven't quite decided what lives there yet. Um, we'll come back to that. Now, this was the second bench that a friend made for me. And it's, uh, I think this is the second or third vice I've had. Uh, big vice anyway. And this one's a swivel vice. It's an old record one, which is a beast. And it's got nice uh, sort of jaws inside for holding round things. And it's got a pipe bender actually, sort of under there. It's kind of got everything you could ever want in a vice, including an oil pot. Uh, it's got the little anvil and it's a swivel vice. So yeah, it's a really, really versatile thing. Um, so I haven't had any trouble with this one. It's good old English vice. This thing I didn't think would last as long as it has. It's called Power Fix WPA GS. It's just for a little swivel vice. I, I felt like this wasn't going to last very long getting I, I do most of the like stamping down the bells on this so it takes quite a lot of force like smacking down on it but it's still going somehow and this is the sort of hammering machine i don't really know what to call it um but you've got a little foot switch and it powers this sand tamping machine and you just feed the bell in, have your foot on the on the thing. Uh, it's adjustable in and out, and you can sort of adjust sort of any gap or where it's hitting, etc. There, and that was made by a friend just up the road. So that's quite a cool machine, custom made for the space that it's in. It doesn't take up much space, to be honest. Um, got some drawer plates. Um, Got all my jigs, sort of all the jigs I've ever made that are still going <laughs> pretty much there. Um, and that's about it for this area. This is the bender, which is from 1941, which you can probably make out there. And uh, I've had all these dies, bending dies made for me. Uh, to fit the tubes that I use most of the time. Um, this is adjustable. And I've got a few of these for different sort of diameter tubes, different radius bends here. Um, and you can just change out these parts quite quickly. Just pull the pin out and sort of tap a little pin there. And you can, you can change everything quite quickly and make all sorts of things. It's got all the original sort of bending dies um from the time which is quite cool and it's now bolted to the floor sort of used it for the best part of a year without it bolted down and uh sort of have to hold it while you're bending <laughs> with the other hand it's quite awkward but, um yeah it's a good good bit of kit nice and solid does the job and uh, i've got quite a few different diameter bends that I can do with it, various things. Um, and what next? Got this pillar drill, 
which came out of Christopher Monk's workshop. So it's quite special to me. Um, good machine. It's a pillar drill, not much more to say. Uh, then this is the MIFID. It's an ML7 from 1946. It's a bit infuriating because it's quite a small, underpowered, slow lathe. Um, so you have to just use it um, sort of carefully and not try your luck, not push it too hard. Um, but everything works beautifully on it. Like it's, it's been looked after, it's in good nick. I've got sort of a nice amount of sort of parts for it that I can use and it's pretty well set up. Um, especially with the quick release collet chuck lever collet, which bolts into this little bracket on the lathe. Um, and that's great, it saves so much time. You just adjust the collet so that it's, you know, adjusted for the right size of your tube and lever it on and off. It's great. It saves a lot of time and it's good for cutting ferrules to length, etc. So, yeah. Should really sort out up there, it's a bit of a tip. Um, these are the bell mandrel, uh, bell templates. Variety of different shapes. Uh, they just live there. This corner is a bit of a tip as well. Um, you're sensing a theme. Uh, and this is the Micron. This is the spinning lathe. So if you imagine this bit facing the other way, uh, it's actually a horizontal milling machine where you'd have like the tools and the carriage this end for your milling and you'd you'd put like your cutters in this end. Um, so that is, we can't remember how old it is, but um, it sort of all came like that. It came with a huge sort of Victorian wood turning lathe, like bed that just wasn't kind of good enough and I held out and eventually bought this on eBay, which is also a Micron and um, it's a bit later from like the fifties and it's got a badge down there actually. To see. Or not. Um, but yeah, that's a turret lathe or capstan lathe and it's got another section just like this that goes onto it. Um, and I've got loads and loads of tools for that. And again, this is backwards. Um, so I could set that up as a lathe if I wanted to. Um, but we've left a gap between them so we can fit like a bigger a bigger bell because it's it's not the biggest lathe in the world. So, you know, to hold a... If I can grab the flugel shape with one hand. If that's clear. Come on, camera. You know, there's not loads of space. So we just left a bit of space between them so that you could spin bigger shapes than otherwise. Uh, and it's all built on this girder and all bolted to that. And then the frame is sort of all along there. It isn't bolted down to the ground. It's really stable and it's not like it's a high precision machine. It's a spinning lathe. Um, these are some sort of flare spinning shapes and garland spinning shapes, pommels. Um, the smaller stuff sort of lives down there. I've got my sheets of brass and copper. They all live underneath. I've got sort of 0.4 brass, 0.45. Uh, some red brass, 0.34 and 5 mil copper, some 0.7 yellow for doing flare spinning, and some 1 mil for pommels, some other mandrels there, mandrels sitting at the back. Um, oh yeah, I've got some 
tools which the little bronze bits are seamed just for a laugh these are all silver steel forged out um, and some sycamore handles um, and a baseball bat <laughs> for spinning pretty happy with how they all work and then this bench like I said uh, I just use for sort of chopping things off to length I do soldering on this block there's uh, a load of chimneys the, the vents they become the vents on the trumpets and they're all made local by a company called JCF Engineering just up the road uh, this has become a bit of a mess again <laughs> These are some modern bells that I've got bent, ready to fit to uh, to some modern trumpets, which I'm eventually going to get around to doing. I've got some valve blocks and some lead pipes, and the bells are all ready to go, so I just need to find the time to, to assemble everything. And then this, shape, this shelf, I've got some sack butt parts that came from John Webb, so if anyone's looking for some sack butt bits, give me a message. I've got quite a lot of stuff from John Webb. Uh, that's the coiled nut and the bits for it. Uh, this is kind of bells either that haven't quite made it or there's nothing wrong with them and they're just ready. Like this one's ready for a garland. I just need to find the time to you know, do a couple of garlands all at once. Uh, there's a couple of other bells in there. This is the second trumpet that I made, which has got a bell that was bought from Taylor here in Norwich. Um, come a long way since uh, 2012. But yeah, that's the bell sort of corner on this uh, filing cabinet. No, the top bell's full of rubbish. Um, chemicals and uh, oil, glue, petrol, you name it, there's loads of rubbish in there. Um, polishing mop drawer. Got some sack butt bells, sort of stacked up down there. The compressor, flugel bell ready, ready to go. This is the uh, polishing machine, which is just a motor that I bought wired in a switch. Uh, this just bolts into the keyway on the spindle. And uh, it's just your standard sort of polishing machine. It'd be good if it was bolted to the, the floor, um, but I kind of need to move it around. It depends what you're doing. Uh, if that gap's not enough and you need to get around it or whatever. Um, so at the moment, it's not bolted down anywhere and you just have to sort of use it accordingly. I usually put my foot on it and it's fine. Um, hence the rubber, rubber mats. Um, I think that's pretty much most of it. Um, if anyone's got any questions or wants to see something specific, just let me know. Um, that's pretty much it. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed that.